Hi, I'm Dr. Govind Babu. I'm a medical oncologist, a professor in Kidwai Memorial Institute of Oncology at Bangalore. And I've been working in this field since 1990. Okay. Um, today, if you talk about genomics, uh, for most clinicians, it is a very new term because uh, clinicians as such are the end users of all these new technologies that come in. And for it to percolate to routine use is rather difficult right now. But it's happening rapidly because we realize that without this, we are nowhere today in treating our patients. So genomics as an integral part, especially in oncology, is very, very important. And that we have understood now. And to this, in this direction, we have actually formed a society called Molecular Oncology Society because we want to increase this awareness amongst all the clinicians across India so that they can use it to help their patients get the best treatment that is possible today. You know, for a long time, all these basic tests were not available in India. But today, there's so many companies that have mushroomed out who are able to give us very good uh, results in genomics. And this is a big, big advantage, especially compared to the West. We can get it done rapidly at a fraction of a cost and with good, very uh, nice bioinformatics that actually help us to treat patients better. So to give you an example as to how this has impacted us, I will take an example of non-small cell lung cancer. You know, when I started uh, treating non-small cell lung cancer in 1990s, we just needed to know whether this patient had lung cancer or not. Um, because we had very limited number of drugs, and all that we had was four to five chemotherapy drugs. But as we went along, we understood that non-small cell lung cancer was not just one disease. Genomics, in fact, has helped us to understand that there could be several different genes that are involved, what we today know as driver mutations. And one of the classical examples, especially in the Indian population, is the epidermal growth factor receptor mutations. We call it as the EGFR mutations. And this is found in almost 25 to 30 percent of our patients, as compared to West, where it is mutated in only about 4 to 5 percent. This is important because we have a classical group of drugs called the tyrosine kinase inhibitors, which target this pathway, and uh, invariably these patients respond to the treatment. Just to give an example as to how good this mode of therapy is, suppose we had a patient of lung cancer, and this patient came with very poor general condition. We never used to give them any treatment because the therapy that we had for long years is chemotherapy. And this was too toxic to be given in a patient whose general condition was poor. But today, if we know that this patient has lung cancer that is driven by this EGFR mutation, even in a patient who has poor general condition, we have the opportunity to give them just tyrosine kinase inhibitors, which are just oral tablets. They're not uh, intravenous chemotherapy agents. This is tolerated very well. And even in patients who have poor performance stasis, we've seen that they respond as rapidly as two to three weeks when this specific drug is used. So this is one of the important things that we have understood from genomics. So that is the story of EGFR mutation. Similarly, we have what is known as the ALK mutation, which is another driver mutation. It's uh, in about five to seven percent of Indian patients. And for this, we have again specific group of drugs called the ALK inhibitors, which again have shown excellent responses. Uh, we also have driver mutations which are today being recognized as MET or ROS, and many more are coming. All these are important because we have specific drugs which are actually can be called as designer drugs based on the specific pathways that are mutated, and they work specifically on these pathways and bring benefit to our patients. Yes. I think when anything new comes, people try to use it indiscriminately. So this is a wrong thing because then ultimately the process is put into disrepute. Uh, so it's important that we have specific guidelines as to when these tests can be ordered, when they should be ordered, and what is the benefit that our patient has from this. Like I mentioned, our Society of Molecular Oncology is working on very similar things as to establish guidelines as to when these need to be ordered, who are the specific populations who would benefit from this, and what therapies would help these patients. So it's important that we have guidelines, yes. Um, so five years from now, I think genomics will play a very, very important part, not just in oncology, but other fields as well. And uh, just to give you an example, I'll take an example of breast cancer. Today we have a drug called trastuzumab, which is useful 
when these patients of breast cancer overexpress an oncogene called HER2 oncogene. So if this oncogene was not uh, looked into and this specific population was not targeted to get trastuzumab, today this drug would be shelved off as being a useless drug. So it is important that we look at specific populations to use specific drugs. Uh, it not only gives the best benefit, it also decreases the side effects that we have. So today we have uh, genomics helping us to see which patients is benefited by which drug. Also we are using it to see which patients will have harmful effects because of a specific drug. So these are two aspects that we understand today and this in the future is going to be the cornerstone for therapy of any cancer patient.